on today's episode. Hey guys, my name is Nick. I am an illustrator, artist by trade, uh, and I collect figurines. Nick is also the designer of our logo. I almost feel like I should do just a, one of those like, thank you so much for joining me today. <laughs> no problem. So we've known each other for several years now. Yes. Like five and a half? Something like that. Yeah, it's been yeah. a while. Um, and you've been a collector since way before we met. Even longer, yes. <laughs> when did you start collecting? I have been building models for most of my life. I built my first model when I was like seven or eight, something at a convention uh, in my hometown, and it's hard to find that kind of stuff there, as you can probably imagine. Uh, but I really began collecting figures in earnest uh, freshman year of college. Ooh. Yeah. And that was when I first got the idea of like, oh, I'm making a little bit of disposable income. I could spend it on whatever I want. <laughs> I have autonomy. I have my own space, which you don't actually. You're in a dorm and it's this big, this big. But it still is yours. <laughs> so it's a passion project. Yeah. You make it work. What, um, what like caused, like what about it drew you to it? I like having physical totems or reminders of these things I really like. I sort of think of them as art pieces, small sculptures. Yeah. You know, maybe that's elevating them a bit too much, but in my mind it isn't. I like these designs for a reason. I think it's high art in some cases. I want it. Yeah. I want a physical thing of it. For art, you you sometimes paint them, right? And that's that's like a common mm -hmm. thing yeah. in the community. A lot of model kits nowadays, their uh, molding is really color accurate. I'm referring, of course, to Gundam models in particular. That's my <laughs> thing. I'm not Warhammer 40k. That's psychotic. More power to you folks who do that. You're very talented. Yeah, sometimes I'll even paint the figurines if. I got it for a reasonable sum, and I feel like the factory paint is... Are we allowed to curse? Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> Good. Because <laughs> sometimes it is. I, just the other day, yesterday, I, um, I've gotten into um, Super Action Statue JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. <laughs> yeah, I started, I started watching JoJo. So I got a figure of a guy from part five, which is my favorite part. He has this hat. And in the manga, it goes from like an orange to a black gradient. Mm. It looks kind of nice. In the anime, it's just orange. Because mm. like, who wants to animate that? But they, instead of it, the paint being a gradient on e the side, you know, and then the crown being like evenly orange, they did it like here. Oh. So where the highlight, the orange is like right here. And then it's like, but it's, and it color match it and then paint the, and, and it's hatched. It has like stupid hat, it, it's a lovely hat, but <laughs> when you're painting all in between the little waffle parts, it's, it's so dumb. But yeah, yeah, I, I paint everything. I am trained, as you know, but they don't. I went to art school, I've been doing art for a long time, so I have sort of the technical skills to do it. I think, why not? Yeah. I don't like something, I'll change it myself. I'll do it myself. Yeah, you might as well. Yeah. You have that, you know, creative freedom. I do. So you were talking about Gundam, so then Gundams are your favorite. That's, is that safe to say? That's or? one of my favorite franchises, yeah. This guy is the Gundam Mark II from Zeta Gundam, one of my favorites. This figure actually gets a bad rap for a few reasons. One, the proportions. Some of you Gundam nerds out there like myself might think, hey you now, the Mark II is a chunky boy. This guy's skinny. What's going on here? The robot Damashi line has this sort of stylization where they make things real angular and, and like thin. It's kind of weird on some mobile suits. It's a little weird on this one, but I also kind of like it. Another specific thing people hate is the fact that the knee can only go 90 degrees. Oh no, but that's not actually true. It can go further. Wait, 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 I can do it. Aha! This leg demonstrates it much better than the other one. So there's a bend there, and a bend there. So it actually goes like a nice 45 degree angle, kind of like this. So you can recreate 
red comet kick. Ba boom. You wouldn't do it with a bazooka in your hand, but hey, you know. But you should always do everything with a bazooka in your hand, because bazookas make everything better. That's true. As you could probably tell, it has two beam savers, which these are detachable. Check it out. And uh, ba boom. I usually display it with a beam saber at home, but I figured the bazooka looked nicer. Um, you get six extra hands, uh, some action pose hands like that. You get some thumbs up hands for, they're better for holding the beam sabers, and one fist, because this one is currently the trigger finger, and then a left trigger finger. You also get this semi-boring rifle. It's not that boring. The magazine is a different color. It's at least two shades of gray. And this, this moves. Some things I appreciate, the paint detailing is always really nice. On Robot Damashis, on... this detaches. Um, <laughs> on Robot Damashis and on SH Figure Arts 2, made by the same company. Um, the eyes, really neatly painted. These side cameras and the head camera, which most Gundams have, are very neatly painted right here, right here, and right there. Um, paint detailing right here. Just basically everywhere that you would expect paint. They don't skip out at all, so... No, it's very clean. It's very clean, very high quality. Uh, that's what you can expect from these figures, largely. There's a couple of them that I have encountered that yellow. And it's a tragedy because the one, one of the ones that's notorious for yellowing is the Zeta Gundam. The titular Gundam of the series. Oh. It yellows. Don't buy it. Um, hopefully they'll come out with a 2.0 or something, but sucks. Yeah. Yeah. The other one which I do have is the base form Unicorn Gundam and its biceps turn pink. Oh. I painted it myself to cover that up. Can uh, I have a tiny, tiny sword fight with the little red rods? Yep. Oh god. Uh... <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Thank you for yes. allowing me to of course. play. Of course. Yes. Gundams have lightsabers, so let's talk about this person who has a beam saber in her hand. Uh, this is Rey, last name redacted, from um, <laughs> Star Wars Rise of Skywalker, which I just recently saw, came out. Ooh, yeah. Yes. I've seen that a lot, like, flying around on the internet. People have opinions about they it. They do. They really do. So this is her design. One of my favorite things about the movie is actually her outfit. Um, she looks cool as shit. Yeah. Um, I love this collar. That collar thing going on. Yeah. It's very cool. It also looks very, like, pretty functional, which I appreciate because I feel like a lot of female characters do not have functional clothing. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, no, I can see that working, like, running and fighting. Yeah, she does a lot of really awesome stuff. I love Ray. She's the best. Some of you who may have the, uh, the Rey figure from The Last Jedi, which I do. I tested this out to help you decide whether you want to get this thing or not. Uh, you can remove her head at the uh, neck joint, don't be disturbed. Ah! Oh god! Ah! And um, <laughs> this is an intentional design um, mechanic because you can actually take out her sweet clav and the hood. Um, <laughs> Very poorly worded. I really want a shirt that says sweet clap. <laughs> this freaking bow staff off. It's very nicely detailed. It's got like ridges in there. I don't know how they do that. That's really great. Check a look at it. Yeah. It's really cool. Um, oh, the tab is in the back. I'm stupid. All right. That's very fine. Yeah. You can put this hood in there and then you can stick her head back in there. Trust me, it works. And uh, actually, you might want to loop her neck through it before you put it in there. I'm not putting it in there again. Uh, Wait, but I want to see it headless uh, with the hood. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I like that. And we'll just <laughs> leave it like that with her head next to it, and then we can act like she is the headless Jedi who decapitated I, I want that in a small <laughs> child's room. As just, instead of like the, the classic like porcelain dolls, it's just this. Boom, there you go. <laughs> Free, free idea, Stephen King. <laughs> Get on it. So another thing that uh, makes Bandai as a toy manufacturer so great, in my opinion, is the awesome articulation. Mm. Usually you get like a good 15 degree bend for elbows and knees. With these, 
get very good articulation right here. Yeah. As you can see. And uh, goes up that far. That's pretty good. Swivel, you know? So they're really good. And then the legs also have great articulation, uh, but you almost would never know because they uh, pop off really easily. Oh. Yes. Is it a deal breaker? I would say no, but it just makes it a little bit hard to pose. Um, except for now. You can pose it right there. Uh, if you want like a weird horse stance, you can <laughs> you can make a better you can do a better job than I can. Um, no horse stance is in. But it does have it does have flaws like this. This um, mechanic, it was a good idea, but I think it comes up a little too high. Like you can't, I've tried real hard to like push it all the way down and it just comes up a little too high. So if you look closely, it's, it takes you a little bit out of the illusion. Um, the legs come off a little too easily. Technically it's not a problem because it's not broken. Yeah. You just stick it back on, but it's slightly annoying. Mm -hmm. But looks wise, for the SH Figure Arts line, one of their selling points is the fact that they print on the faces. Like they sculpt the face and then they use a machine to take their face, like a photograph or something, and they print it on. <laughs> Accessory she comes with, um, this is the Skywalker lightsaber, as many of you nerds might notice. Um, it is mended in the middle due to a certain thing that happens in The Last Jedi. In The Last Jedi, spoiler alert, if you haven't seen The Last Jedi, small spoiler, it breaks in half. Um, they mended it, so, and actually it kind of looks cool with the brown uh, strap there. That's where it got yeah. from. Yeah, oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, definitely at first just pictured like the lightsaber, like the light part breaking, and I was just like, <laughs> Maybe that's like, no, 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 you definitely mean... Yeah, remember that part, part in The Last Jedi where Snoke comes over and he's like, Child, you can do nothing to me. He grabs the lightsaber with his bare hands. Uh-huh. And he just goes... <laughs> he's so powerful, he breaks light in half. Yes. She comes with her blaster, her trusty blaster that she has and eight extra hands, um, pointing hands that are just like vague force hands, I guess. Um, one holdy hand and the other is like a solid fist because the current right hand is the other holdy hand. Um, she's got another lightsaber hand that's sort of like the thumbs up on this guy. Good for chopping, chop and chop. And then an actual chop hand, <laughs> a relaxed hand, sort of just like, yeah, whatever. Here's the hood, and then the bow staff, which I usually like to put on there. If a uh, character has item or weapon storage, I like to take advantage of that. Speaking of which, I forgot to mention, this guy has weapon storage. So you can open this butt flap and put this. You can put the bazooka in there. You can't put this in there. Trust me, you can do it. It works. I tested it. It works. <laughs> Speaking of weapon storage. Yes. This guy. Check him out. Many of you may notice um, that this is a character you all love and adore. His name is Convoy. I'm kidding, it's optimal. I was gonna say, like, uh, I Con didn't think I was that ignorant of Transformers! No, Convoy, <laughs> Convoy is the uh, Japanese name of Optimus uh... Prime for to oversimplify it. So, yes, this thing has great item storage. This is the uh, Siege Optimus Prime. It's a Voyager class, I believe. Um, I'm sort of a casual Transformers collector, because I really like them, but it's not as, like, serious of an addiction, I mean, uh, an interest is these two. Mm -hmm. Get so safe. yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, but if you are interested in this design, it's sort of like a cross between his G1 look and a Cybertronian truck look. Um, it is part of the Siege line. But do keep in mind, if you buy this on the shelf, you're gonna get some battle damage paint on here that looks terrible. 99% of the time I hate battle damage. It's sloppy, poorly done paint. Some people like that, it's okay. They can do that. I like accessories 
that have optional battle damage. Like if they have an alternate face that's like scratched up, they've got like teeth buried. That's pretty cool. There's an Earthrise version of this. It's like a very similar, you know, mechanical like um, or functional transformation and look. It's it's more accurate to his G1 representation. None of this extra like blue stuff over here. It's just got the two windows. Um, so it's supposed to represent his Earth appearance of Earth Rise. So this is Siege, this is when he's on Cybertron. Um, the only version of this mold you can get, unless I'm wrong, has the battle damage crap on it and ooh, grinds my gears. I took some 91% isopropyl alcohol and some Q-tips and several hours of my life that I'll never get back. And now he's nice and clean. It's very good. You might need to take a... Uh, very sharp uh, exacto knife to get mm -hmm. into the really small crevices because this, as you can see, is very nicely detailed. Lots of panel lines yeah. in here. So when you go and are shopping for these things, are there any like tips to shopping or criteria when you're looking at what to buy? Um, like what all? What are all the things that you take into consideration before actually purchasing a model? <laughs> the uh, advice I give to folks who are interested is to research various uh, prices that appear online, including the Japanese price. It's not that hard to convert. Find your websites that you like to get stuff from, and when you hear in the pipeline about a figure coming out, obsessively check it. Maybe that's not good advice. But just be on top of it. If you really want this thing. Be on top of it, check it. I'm gonna set an alarm, check it like a, every morning or whatever, or midday, um, to make sure that you don't miss the pre order window. AmiAmi Ami is a great site. Once in a while, I manage to get some stuff. If you're in New York City, Image Anime, give them your patronage. Okay, <laughs> so as you can see, he looks really G1 accurate. It's like nice. And anything that isn't, I kind of like that look. The little tires on his. My sides, I dig it. There's a little bit of kibble right here, but I don't mind it so much. Kibble, are you familiar? With I am term? not. I just think of dog food. Kibble is a term that's popular in the Transformers community in particular to refer to remnants of the alt mode or the vehicle mm. mode okay. shown in the robot mode. So like this stuff. Yeah. These panels right here. Actually, it's not that bad of kibble. Um, the main thing is like the backpack, but it's like one big square piece, which is, eh, it's unfortunate. That kind of looks like a back shield. It's a back shield! Yeah. Uh, speaking of shields, he actually does have a... A front shield? He has a front shield, <laughs> which you can plug into any of these ports here. If you see a port of similar size, you can put it there. Um, but I actually prefer to transformographize it into its other form. Technical terms here. Yes. Cool. Yeah. You can uh, bludgeon people with it, but that's not it, man. That's not all. Take this out, and then you take, and then you take, okay. You gotta do this part first. Cool. <laughs> it's an ax. That's awesome. Check it. All right. And you put the ax in here, and he chops. Choppy, very choppy. And then he's got his like classic gun, rifle, thingamajig. Pretty sure he's not left-handed, but you know. Ambidextrous. He's, he's ambidextrous. He's Optimus Prime, he can do whatever he wants. Yeah. So looks-wise, this is one of my favorite renditions of Optimus I've ever seen. So I had to get this. But once again, on your copy that you're gonna get online or in the store, it's going to have the battle damage. You might like it. You might like the battle damage. Like, it's gonna be on here, on his forearms, on his freaking shoulders. Cleaning this up and leaving the Autobot logo. Bruh. <laughs> I wouldn't wish that on my worst enemy. So that's, that's Optimus. Oh my god. Hey. Are we done talking about toys? Oh, in case you wanted to see them, check out the boxes. Here they are. This is Ray's box, obviously. Um, figure Arts always has great boxes because they're small, they're thin and compact. So if you want to keep the box, they store really easily and neatly. I love them. Especially the Star Wars ones, they're very thin. 
Um, the robot Amish ones, they can also be really good. Um, this one actually is quite thin. Not always. Sometimes they come with like a ton of accessories. Are there any figurines that you have uh, in the box that you've never taken out? Um, yes. Uh, also, is see. figurine correct or is it figure or model? Is figurine offensive? No. I just realized I've been using figurine the whole time. I was like, I didn't actually ask you figurines, the proper terminology. Uh, someone might crucify me for this, but a figurine's fine to me, figure's fine to me, action figure's fine to me. They're, they're action figures. The only thing that, like, the only thing that sometimes, nothing really grinds my gears because even toy is somewhat accurate. It's a toy. It's just a nicer toy. So the only problem I have with it is to not misrepresent its durability. The other thing, and this is gonna sound super cliche to some people, but the term doll. But the reason it bothers me is because, like, it bothers me the least for these because they're very similar to dolls that are like humanoid, very lifelike. It's a small doll. Sure, if someone wanted to call that a doll, why not? As far as things I have not opened, um, there are some things I have that are, hmm, I have like this Bender action figure, just a one-off from the Futurama line. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, it's like, what? <laughs> I got it in college from uh, Newbury Comics in Providence. Hopefully that place is still around. I used to go there all the time. Also, this is fiscally irresponsible, but there are some figures I have that, like, I just love it so much that I have one that's open and one that's sealed. Aww. Those are very few and far between. I have, like, three, I think. How many figures do you have? Not answering that. Oh god, okay. <laughs> A lot. Do you have any more questions for me in the collecting world? Um... I'm not sure I do. I think that kind of covered all the bases. Cool. Just like a, a nice little intro. Hopefully at some point we'll have you back to build and decorate one. Because I'd love to also oh, learn about dear. those techniques. Yes. No um, pressure. <laughs> yeah, of course. So, yes. Look forward to that. Um, yeah, and it, th it can be fun because I obviously know nothing about this stuff. So it would be introducing it to like a complete complete beginner yeah um, be fun yeah i love this and i want it like in real life like an actual thing where it's just like cute murder. why does it not surprise me your favorite thing is the big axe hmm i don't know <laughs> and the bazooka oh yeah i love bazookas the bigger the weapon the better yes it's still stealth mode if no one makes it out alive hmm so thank you so much for joining us. Um, this has been my friend Nick, and these are some of his beautiful figures that he was very kind enough to bring. Um, so please check out Nick's portfolio, link included down below. Still updating it. <laughs> work in progress. Yes. But aren't we all? And my Instagram, that has a bit more yes. current uh, work on it, but also still updating that. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks guys. Bye.